everyone! In today's tutorial, we're going to learn the control blocks. The control blocks are the one in orange. The very first block that we have is wait 1 seconds. This is pretty self-explanatory, so we're making something wait for 1 second before it goes on to the next line of code. We can also change it to decimal points like 0.1, then it's probably going to wait for a really short time and then move on to the next line of code. Repeat 10 times and repeat forever. If we put in a block of code such as this change color effect by 25, if we put it on this one, kitty changes its color 10 times. But if we put it on this one, kitty changes its color forever. Now we have the if then blocks. So previously we had round rectangle blocks. But here we see hexagon blocks. So the round rectangle blocks that we had before, like the timer, what was inside of them was numerical values. We see numbers stored inside of them. But for hexagons, they are true or false statements. So is the mouse pointer touching kitty? False. No, it's not. So these are called binary statements. It can only be true or false. So let's say we want something to happen when, we, when the mouse pointer is touching kitty. So if the mouse pointer is touching kitty, let's say we want kitty to make the meow sound. But if we hit the green flag and try to check and see if it works, it's not working because as soon as we hit the green flag, it runs its code and it's done. So by the time my mouse is reaching over to kitty, the code is already run. So we are running out of time. So instead, we will put it in a forever loop so that it's constantly checking to see if the mouse pointer is touching kitty. So if we hit the green flag, it makes a meow sound whenever the mouse is touching kitty. We can also use this if then else statement. So if the mouse pointer is touching kitty, then we want it to be a bigger size. We can set it to, let's say, 150. So with this one, when the mouse pointer is touching kitty, then it makes a meow sound. But when the mouse pointer is not touching kitty, then it does nothing. But with this one, we have another block of code that we can plug in. Let's say when it's not touching kitty, we want the size to be like 40 and be really, really small. So if we hit the green flag, oh, we need the forever loop. Remember, we need the forever loop so that it's constantly checking if the mouse pointer is touching kitty. So when we hit the green flag, when the mouse pointer is not touching kitty, then the size is set to 40%. If the pointer is touching kitty, then it goes to 150. So is the mouse touching kitty? Yes, it is true. Then set size to 150. If the mouse is not touching kitty, then the statement would be false. If it's false, then set size to 40%. Now let's look at the wait until block. This looks similar to our wait for one second block, but they're a little bit different. So for this one, what matters is the number of seconds that we want it to wait. Whereas this one is conditional. Wait until something is true. So we can make it wait until the mouse pointer is touching kitty. I will show you the difference by using these two blocks of code. So for our first one, when the green flag is hit, we want to make sure all graphic effects are cleared out. So clear graphic effects, wait for one second, and then change its color by 25. So we'll do the same for this one. When the green flag is hit, we make sure we clear all graphics, and then wait until the mouse is touching kitty and then change its color effect by 25. Let's bring in the size back to 100%. Okay, so when we click on this one, after one second, kitty changes its color. Let's look at that again. One second and then changes its color. But if we click on this one, kitty doesn't change its color until our mouse pointer comes to kitty. So that is the difference between the two blocks of code. 
This one sets the specific number of seconds, whereas this one waits until a certain condition is met. Repeat until and repeat 10 are basically the same thing as the difference between wait 1 seconds and wait until. So same with these guys. So this one repeats 10 times and this one repeats until a condition is met. So this one repeats 10 times and then stops its code. This one re keeps on repeating its code until a certain condition is met. Then it stops its code. So I'll show you the difference. Now let's have a look at our code. When we click on the green flag, whatever the code blocks are inside of this repeat block is going to be repeated 10 times and then be stopped. Whereas this one, when the green flag is hit, it repeats these two blocks of code again and again until the mouse pointer is touching kitty. So let's try this one first. It changes its color 10 times and then stops. Whereas this one, it keeps on changing its color forever until my mouse pointer is hovering over kitty. Then it stops its code. Now let's look at the stop block. In the stop block, we have stop all, stop this script, and stop other scripts in Sprite. To show you how it works, I will prepare myself some code blocks. Now let's have a look at our code. When the green flag is hit, it's going to start from size 10% and then it keeps on adding size plus 1. Whereas this one keeps on changing its color. So when we hit the green flag and we um, play both of our codes, it's going to grow big because it's changing its size by plus 1 and it's also changing its color. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of this sprite and now I have two sprites. When I click on the green flag, both of them are running. But if I click stop all, it stops everything. It's basically like the red button. Now I'm going to use stop this script. So to do that, I will tweak a little bit of my code. So what we have done is if we click on the space key, we're going to stop this script, which means all the blocks in this one. But this one is still going to go on. So it's going to change its color effect by 25, but only these guys are going to stop its script. So let's hit the green flag to see what happens. It grows and changes its color, but when we hit the space bar, it stops all these scripts over here, but it continues this line of code. Now let's change it to stop this script. Now let's change it from stop this script to stop other scripts in Sprite. What this does is do the other way around where this one gets stopped where and this one continues its code. So it stops other scripts in Sprite as in this other script, whereas this one is going to continue running. So when we click on the green flag and we hit the space key, it's going to keep on growing, but stop changing its color effect. Our last three blocks. When I start as a clone, create a clone of myself and delete this clone. So what exactly is a clone? To show you this, I will bring in this trigger block when space key is pressed, create a clone of myself and I'm gonna make it move 10 steps. So the original sprite is gonna move 100 steps after it creates a clone, because when if we don't move 100 steps, then the clone is gonna be pasted right in front of myself, so uh, we won't be able to tell if a clone is made. So after it creates a clone, the original is gonna move 100 steps. So our clone is gonna be here, and our original sprite is gonna move 100 steps to the right. So when we click on the spacebar, hit the green flag and click on the spacebar, we created another clone of ourselves.
Now later on we will look at the stamp block, but a stamped sprite will be stuck on the stage and we won't, to, we won't be able to move it around with our mouse. But as you can see, a stamped clone can be moved around with our mouse and it can even be coded. So when I start as a clone, we can make it change its color. In a forever loop, we can make it change its color. So if we hit the green flag again and press the spacebar, our clone keeps on changing its color. We can also delete our clone using this delete this clone block. So when our mouse pointer is touching on our cloned kitty, it's going to disappear. So when we hit the space bar, um, a cloned kitty is going to appear and our original kitty is going to move 10 step, 100 steps to the right and the cloned kitty is going to keep on changing its color until we hover over it. Then it's going to disappear and get deleted. Okay, now let's hit the green flag and hit the space key. Our clone is created and now it's going over the loop over and over again, changing its color. And when we hover over it, it's going to disappear because it's deleted. Boom, got deleted. So that is all of our control blocks. If you master these control blocks and know how to use them well in different ways, it will be really helpful when creating games with it. So explore how you can use the control blocks in different ways and you will find more creative ways to come up with games. For this challenge, make Kitty leave a clone wherever she goes, and the clones are all going to start walking as they change color. Leave a gap of 0.5 seconds in between the clones' costume change. For Kitty, when space key is pressed, make it go in a loop of creating a clone of itself. After creating a clone, make it glide to a random position on stage. And if on edge, make it bounce. For the clones, when they are created, make them change to the next costume, also change color, and make them glide one second to the mouse pointer. Make it wait before it goes into another loop of changing its costume. Create another block of code where when the timer exceeds 10 seconds, stop all the scripts on stage. The answer key will be provided, so make sure you check when you're done.